night, a passing car gave me the clue. It was sound. So I thought I'd try out some other sounds. Of course, what the spider really responds to is the vibration of the approaching moth's wings. But I thought I'd experiment with some different frequencies. One thing that you guys are doing the best um, of any podcast that I've ever seen with an open forum is that, and I even love that you call it a weave because there isn't really a debate in a weave. Everything ties together. And it's interesting to me as the people are new guests and they become part of the spiders, um, them learning that. I can feel it energetically of them learning that this, this is a weave. This isn't a debate. This, is a this isn't like every show before it. This isn't here for us to take our ideas and make swords out of them. This is for us to take our ideas and make, make web, web together web. out of it. And there's something so fucking beautiful. And the way you all do it, like, um, you add this sense of, like, responsibility to the show but also um, I like how you get it off track and remind people this little magical element or just have a story sometimes about a real synchronicity in your life or you always bring it back to an owl because it's funny to me and synchronistic um, but Marcus Allen is like kind of this really great glue at he might me and you could be talking about two totally different ideas and slick dissonant comes in with a totally different idea and then Marcus Allen's over there when no one even knows this is for fucking 15 minutes that he hasn't spoke and then he comes in and he finds one word that glues all of our weaves together in a way web, web, and um, Jim the thing that's so great about Jim is that if you just visually are watching he's always doing something so fucking funny like always doing something so clowny so funny with the green screen with the thing and when he does actually speak up he never will take the floor um, he always lets the person, like if two people talk at the same time and he's one of the people, he always, 100% of the time, lets the person take the floor and kind of saves his little nugget and it always ends up better landed a few seconds later. That uh, giant um, black widow that I took that picture of, but it was eating a, a baby rattlesnake. And no, I so, didn't see that. Wow. Okay. So I uh, posted this thing, and, and uh, I was working with a, a friend, kind of doing some magic stuff. And she's like, "Oh, you need to go back and ask it its name." And I'm like, "Oh, I need to talk to the spider, right?" Before. Like, you're not just shown a a uh, black widow eating a rattlesnake every day. You need to fucking pay attention to what the sign is. That you that you're supposed to be showing, right? So I go back, I'm like, okay. So I sit with the spider, I'm like, what is your name? And she says, grandmother. And I get this kind of wave, I'm like, holy shit, Hopi grandmother spider? And she says, we eat the snake. We, as in we. Wow! Wow! When I went back and started digging into that grandmother spider uh, mythology, that comes from an original Toltec grandmother spider goddess, who is the creation goddess that they don't even really I don't know that they know the proper name of, but she is the goddess of Teotihuacan. And she is symbolized by spider, spiders and owls. Oh.
the world. Dein bestes Dein Schaubi. Schaubi. Once I was out walking in the forest and I saw the most beautiful spider's web with little droplets of sparkling water all over it. And right in the middle was a beautiful little spider spinning her web, just like spinning a story.